Throughout this video, we will be looking at the biomechanics of a basketball jump shot. We will be analyzing this video clip. Concepts we will cover include ground reaction force, torque, and projectile motion. The first concept we will be talking about is ground reaction force. Ground reaction force is an important biomechanical concept to understand. Essentially, ground reaction force is equivalent to the normal force. In the scenario given, we have a basketball player preparing to shoot. In the position shown, the weight of the person's body is producing a force in the downward direction due to gravity. Because of Newton's third law, we know that an equal and opposite reaction force must be produced. In this case, that force is known as the vertical ground reaction force. Because the person also entered the scene with forward momentum, we also know that there must be a horizontal reaction force, in this case, the horizontal ground reaction force. These two forces are more commonly known as normal force and force of friction. In this scenario, let's assume the person weighs 160 pounds. Their weight downwards was equal 160 times negative 9.81, or gravity. The vertical ground reaction force would be equal and opposite to this because the person is not accelerating. Similarly, the force produced in the horizontal direction is equal to the ma mass of the person times the velocity in the horizontal direction to the right. The horizontal ground reaction force would be equal and opposite to this since the person has completely stopped moving to the, in the horizontal direction. The second concept we will be looking at is torque produced by the elbow in order to produce motion of the ball. In the video, we can see that as the player begins to shoot, they move their arm into a position with a small angle between their upper and lower arm. A closer look at the loading of the arm allows us to see that rotation about the elbow will be the source of torque that allows for force to be imparted on the ball. As we continue the video, we see the person extends their arm to a full extension, resulting in a theta, or an arm angle, of 170 degrees much larger than that of the original 63 degrees. Because we are able to find the initial joint angle and the final joint angle, we can now use the kinematics equation shown to find the angular acceleration. W in the equations represents the angular velocity, where A represents the angular acceleration. Note that time was t, which equals 0.37 seconds. The third and final concept we will look at in this video is projectile motion. In order to actually shoot the ball, the person must impart a force on the ball that produces upward motion and motion towards the basket, or this case, towards the right. After being released, the only force acting on the ball is gravity. This produces an acceleration in the downward direction of negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, in the scenario above, let's assume the person released the ball with an initial velocity to the right of 5 meters per second and a velocity upwards of 3 meters per second. The ball begins traveling through the air until it reaches its peak height. For a brief moment at its peak height, the velocity in the vertical direction will be at 0 meters per second. The acceleration in the vertical direction is still at negative 9.81 meters per second squared. However, in the horizontal direction there is no acceleration, meaning the velocity still remains at 5 meters per second. We are then able to use these linear kinematic equations to find the range of the ball in both the x and y direction. The equation is the same, however in the x direction there is no acceleration. In the y direction, acceleration is equal to gravity. The result is a ball that continues traveling to the right and slowly moves back towards earth and down through the hoop. 